Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. As you can see on the screen, we're gonna begin the first episode of the season 7 with families. So we're gonna talk about families because this season is dedicated to the families only. And I'm sure that all of you know the families. But at this session, I mean at this season actually, I try to give you more details about families for example making the families parametric which helps you to create more practical families but at the beginning of the session we're gonna talk about the basic knowledge about families and also the parametric families in the format of a shelf as an example and then after reviewing these topics we will go for more complicated topics and exemplify difficult i mean more difficult cases right now as you can see we got three types of families in revit which is one of the questions of the autodesk exam the first type is the system families as i showed you the system families are walls roofs floors and ceilings or shortly as wfc i mean wrfc i'm sorry these four are the system families which are predefined and saved in templates and you can duplicate them the next group of families are the in place families like model in place families in place families are families that are only being used in the current project and then the third group of the families are the loadable families that at first we should create these in a in an external reference and then we load them into the project i mean they are not predefined but what are the loadable families actually we create the families which are used in frequent projects that right now we're gonna talk about the loadable families and they are being used also in the model in place families as well and note that only families can be made parametric I mean, for instance, mass is a kind of family that later I will talk about the masses as well. But till now, I want you to concentrate on the families and we will exemplify cases. I open a family template file in new file and then let me specify metric generic model by this way. When do we use the nested families in our project? I mean, we use some specific families in creating the other families note that here if i want to create a shelf as a family for instance first of all i pick the reference plane like this vertically and horizontally by this way and then basically we we'll start creating or sketching families from sketching the reference planes i mean sketching the reference planes is the first step in creating families so this is considered as the plan of the shelf we are just having a review then i place the dimensions after placing the dimensions i should equalize the both sides by this way right now the two sides are equal to each other and then here i place the dimensions and then equalized very well and then i associate the parameter after placing the total dimension create new parameter i name the parameter wide by this way and then i place the total dimension and then i associate it to depth okay the parameter is created well done that as you know we can control our parameters in family types that we can get access to the type properties 200 and i mean 2500 for divide well done apply and for the depth 900 i recommend you to test your parameters after associating them to the dimensions actually then we're gonna sketch the lateral walls of this shelf so i pick extrusion and then by rectangle i can strain it and also the reference planes i can strain them or lock them actually it locks to mean that the reference planes are constrained to each other so they are moving with each other and i pick the i mean i uh, put the extrusion here and i lock them well done but how can i associate the parameters let me fix this for associating the parameters first of all we should place aligned dimensions 
but while you are measuring the dimensions i want you to watch this part carefully since this is the basic knowledge that which is required for you before creating a family whenever you wanted to associate a parameter as i told you before we should measure the dimensions so if we measure the dimensions from the reference plane at first check this out since the ext extrusion is locked or constrained to the reference plane and always for associating the parameters reference planes stand at the first priority then the secondary priorities are the lines of your objects or the geometries i know most of you may know these details but i just wanted to have a review in the continuation let's make it more complicated since i'm gonna provide you with many tips and techniques i select the dimension as you can see and then in label dimension i click on create parameter then in parameter properties you can either choose type or instance based on your needs but what is the differences between type and instance if you want to associate the parameters to all of the elements to a specific type you should check type but if you only want to control a single object you should check instance and at this context we should associate this extrusion to the type properties not ends and then i name it as t for example as the thickness but sometimes associating pro parameters to some of the objects are not i mean necessary especially for the fixed dimensions but we are going to modify and control the thickness at the other side i place the dimension firstly uh, i start from the reference plane i select it but i don't wanna create a new parameter so there's no need to click on create parameter i open the labels and then i associate these to t check this out and then i click on finish right now by the parameter tree i can control these two extrusions let's check out the result in 3d view back to the reference level plan view and i recommend you while you are creating parameters and then associate them to the objects or geometries test the parameters to make sure that they are working correctly for instance the vibe 30 hundreds check this out to check if the thickness is okay this time i modify depth 5 hundreds apply let's check it out it is working correctly and then thickness 100 well done everything is okay as you can see so i ensured myself about the parameters before going to the next step the parameter of the height is left so for associating the parameter of height at first i should sketch the reference plane here as you can see and then i place the distance or the dimension here we usually have two objects you should check it here as you can see we got the reference plane uh here it is which is defined as the origin point as you can see in the properties and the another one is the reference level as you can see these two are separated from each other sometimes you should measure the dimension or distance from the reference level and sometimes you should measure it from the reference plane that you can use i mean select the reference plane by, by pressing tab but at such a condition there is no difference between the reference level and reference plane since both of them are placed in the same position so after the measuring the distance i associate it to a new parameter i create it i name it height by this way as you can see okay the parameter is ready I select the extrusions and then I extend them to connect them to the reference plane to, to, to top and then constrain them. So I got the two extrusions. Let me test the parameter of height. Now this process is so simple. I define the value and then I click on apply. Following that we're gonna sketch the shelves. There are gonna be a specific I mean, value of offset between the shelves and the extrusions so i sketch a reference plane right here as you can see and the another one here then we got two strategies for continuing the process the first one we can measure the distance between these two reference planes and then associate the parameter and the second strategy or approach is to measure the distance between these three and then equalize them and then place the total dimension between these two lines there is no differences between these two you can use one of them 
because there is no difference. But I recommend you this way, since it is more standard. But the previous one was more practical, which is this, as you can see, which is the practical way. I place the dimensions and then I associate the parameter. And guys, note that I'm intentionally carrying out the process rapidly, since you're supposed to know these issues. But I try to reduce my speed, create parameter, and then in type or instance, actually it does not make difference. And then I name it edge distance, which is the distance between the edges. Okay. And as you know, you can control the sizes of the dimensions by using a scale 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. Check this out. If you modify the scale, the text and the dimensions will be changed too. And then extrusion for sketching the shelves. But here we're gonna talk about the nested families. Here if I sketch this extrusion here, as you can see, there are some locks here that let you to lock the extrusion to the reference plane but i got two objects except the reference planes in both sides but i want to ensure myself that the sketch tool i mean the sketch is going to be locked with the reference planes not with the other objects so watch this part carefully because i don't want to lock my extrusion to the other extrusions i want to lock the sketch to the reference planes and this is a very significant point so watch carefully guys we're not allowed to lock the sketch of an object to the another object let me tell that again you should not constrain or lock the sketch of an object to the another object especially to the body of the another object since it causes you problem i mean it causes making problems so what should we do we should assign a medium between these two objects which is the reference plane as you can see i like the extrusion to the reference plane and the another extrusion to the reference plane as well so we never ever constrain two objects to each other except in specific conditions i mean very special situations anyway let's go on actually i was worried about this object and i wanted to make sure that these two objects are not constrained to each other so i'm gonna use a line tool to constrain these to each other reference planes to the sketch of the extrusion by this way as you can see very well i lock the reference planes to the objects wait for a second please i'm just trying to explain the principles of creating a family while creating it after constraining these i click on finish however you may have better ways as i told you before but this is more practical I move the extrusion by this way but i need more copies from this extrusion that i want to do it by using array array tool i select it then i click on array here as you can see it is not available to extend the line of the array and even if i uncheck constraint check this out it is not available i can't move it to up there seems to be a problem here how can i solve this if we wanted to array in a specific object and then we got problems with specifying the constraint of the array or even move if i uncheck constraint so again we got problem at such a condition we should click on disjoin then we can place it wherever we want but unfortunately we don't have such a thing in array i mean we're not able to disjoin the object here as you can see in the toolbar we do not have the option of disjoin to be able to specify the constraint so we should take an alternative way and these are the details on the obstacles that you may encounter with let me review i want to array this object but i can't extend the line so what should i do a simple thing first of all i select the extrusion here as you can see there is a lock or constraint that I, that I unlock it i dissociate the work plane and after that if i pick array tool i will be able to sketch the line so at such a problem if you wanted to solve it just select the object or extrusion for example and then click on dissociate work plane as you can see the constraint is removed but don't forget to uncheck constraint here if i check constraint check this out we got a still the limitation in sketching the line of the array by this way however we got 
another alternative way to remove this problem. Here if I pick move tool and then I disjoin it, I check disjoin, then I move the object a little bit, then the constraint will be removed as you can see. I mean if we disjoin the move tool and then move the object, after that we will be able to sketch the line of the array. Then we can array the object. So I introduced you two ways for solving such a problem, but none of these are the main way. I mean even dimension ways are not accepted by Revit. For instance, I want to array the extrusion by moving to end to second actually. 10 as number. Check this out. By this way, 10 times. If I want to modify the value, for example, I specify 11. As you can see, the warning message is displayed. And it says that this array contains multiple couples of copies of some identical geometries. Let me show it to you. Performance might be improved by using a nested family and arraying copies of its instances. So as it was mentioned, this array contains multiple copies, which is more than the standard value, more than the accepted value at, at this context. I mean more than 10 copies is not accepted by Revit and the recommended way is to use nested families. So as a result, Whenever you wanted to array in a specific object, in order to create another family, we should create the object in a new template file and then load it here and then we can use array. So this is a nested family. A nested family is a family which is loaded to the another family template file. For instance, if we want to create a door in the family template file, we should create the handle of the door in a separate template file and then we load the handle into the family. But what else if we had repeated elements in the family? Actually, when we got multiple elements in a family, they are similar in type, they are moving with each other like the groups. In order to keep the association between these repeated elements, we should create them in an another template file to make them behave like a single unit within a project.